Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how to solve separable differential equations. The reason why some first-order differential equations are called separable is because variables in these equations can be separated and the equation itself can be written in the following form. As you can see here, everything that involves y is on the left side, including differential dy, and everything that involves x is on the right hand side, including differential dx. And if we are able to write equation in this form, well, first of all, then we know that it's a separable differential equation, and second, we solve that equation by integrating both sides. So, as we look at our example, dy dx plus 2xy equals 0. We're going to rewrite this equation in this form, and then we're going to integrate both sides. I'm going to make a note of this approach. Okay, so now let's try to apply the steps to this equation. I'm going to start by isolating dy dx. So for that, I'll have to subtract 2xy from both sides. dy dx equals negative 2xy. And since my goal is to have differential dy on one side and differential dx on the other side, what I'll do, I'll multiply by dx on both sides. This way I'll have dy equals negative 2xy dx. Well, I'm almost there, right? The only thing I need to do is to take this y and make it appear on the left side. Well, I'll do that using division. So I'll have to divide by y on the right hand side, that will cancel it. And then I will have to divide by y on the left side. Now, this is what I have. dy over y equals negative 2x dx. So I was able to separate variables. So that's indeed separable differential, equ differential equation. And the last step is to integrate both sides. So I'm going to apply integral on the left and on the right. Now at this point you can work on each side and integrate each side on a side if integration involves you know, many steps. Um, in our case integration is pretty easy so I'll just continue here. Now on the left side I have, well that's technically 1 over y dy, right? Integral of 1 over y is ln of absolute value of y. And we know that when we work with indefinite integrals, we always have to write plus c. Well, since I have indefinite integrals on both sides, I'm going to write plus c1 on the left. And on the right hand side, it's going to be plus c2. And what we're going to see in a little bit um, is that, in fact, we can combine those constants and just write plus c only on one side. But I'll show you. Now, on the right-hand side, we have negative 2x dx. So integral of negative 2x is negative 2 stays. It's the constant. And integral or antiderivative of x is increase the power. So it's x squared and divide by that power plus c2. Now, what I'll do next is I'll simplify this expression on the right hand side. And at the same time, what I will do, I will combine constants. So in my mind, I will take C1, subtract it from both sides. And what I'll have on the right hand side, um, I'll have two constants being subtracted. So I know that when I subtract two constants, I will end up with a constant. So I'll just rename the result and I will call that a constant C3. Well, I could just call it C. In fact, the name is not that important. And overall, when we work with differential equations and we'll see those arbitrary constants most of the time, we can relabel them whenever convenient. I'll make a note of that. So what I usually do, I just use their names in order, C1, C2, C3, and so on and so forth. And then in my final answer, I just relabel it and call it C, just for 
cleaner look. Well, let's keep going. I'm going to simplify this term. So what I have so far is the following. ln of absolute value of y equals negative x squared plus c3. And guess what? That is solution to the given differential equation. So remember when we solve differential equations, uh, solutions are families of functions. Well, here it is. It's a family of functions. So it's a family because this answer contains infinitely many functions because of that arbitrary constant, which can be any number. Notice that in this function, y is not by itself. So this is implicit form. So this is solution in implicit form. And I can box it and just stop here. There is really nothing wrong in leaving your solution in implicit form. In fact, a lot of times that's the only form you can write it. And it's either really hard or impossible to write it in to write it in the explicit form. Well, in this case, for this example, I will show you how this solution can be written in the explicit form. A lot of times, if it is possible and not that hard, you may see solutions to differential equations written in the explicit form, especially in the answer key um, of a textbook. So to get variable y by itself, which is going to be the explicit form of this function, we have to refresh how to switch from logarithmic form of an expression to exponential form. So remember, if we have logarithm of something, let's say a with base b equals some kind of number c, this is logarithmic form, to switch to exponential form, you do the following, you take base b, you raise it to the power, which is the number to which logarithm equals to. So logarithm equals to power. So b is raised to this power, c equals whatever stands inside logarithm, so equals a. So that is just algebra, power and then equals to a. So let's try it. What is the base of this logarithm? Well, ln is the natural logarithm, its base is number e e raised to this power, this is the whole expression is the power, power negative x squared plus c3 equals to what stands inside the logarithm. So in this case, absolute value of y. Here it is. Well, y is by itself now or almost by itself. Now, every time when you have logarithms involved after integration, you will have absolute values. So be careful when you drop absolute value or think if you can drop it. Now, in this case, well, um, we can drop the absolute value because what we can see that absolute value equals to is actually a positive number because e, Euler number, is a positive number. So no matter to what power I raise it, it's also, it always going to be something positive. So in this case, I can drop absolute value and I will switch sides. So y equals e to the power negative x squared plus c3. Well, now y is by itself and it is an explicit form of this function. So this solution is exactly the same as the one we found here. We just did some algebraic manipulations and put in a slightly different form. And to refresh a few more things from algebra, what I'll do, I'll follow the laws of exponents. We'll recall that we add exponents when we multiply bases. So what I mean is that this expression on the right hand side can be written the following way. e to the power negative x squared times e to the power c3. Like that. Now, what is e to the power c3? c3 is a constant, right? e is the constant. Constant raised to the power that is constant gives me another constant. So that's another situation where I can relabel constants. And since I can see how I am getting very close to my final answer here, or the final version of the answer, I'm going to relabel this constant as just c. Or it could be c4, but again, since I'm very close to finishing this, I'll just call it c. And um, Maybe I'll use this negative exponent and write it as a positive exponent. So what I'll have at the end is y equals c over 
e to the power x squared, like that. So e to the power x squared is in the denominator because I use that negative power and switch it to a positive by putting it in the denominator. Well, I'll stop here. So all those steps are usually optional and um, no one really can tell you how far you go. You might have to take all those steps if you're trying to see if your answer matches textbook answer or you know your friend's answer. But overall, these steps are optional. So what we have here is solution in explicit form. Y is by itself. And one last note here, um, as I look at solution to that differential equation written in two different forms and they look quite different, even though they represent exactly the same family of functions. So it is common for solutions to the same differential equations to look different if different methods have been used or if solution was manipulated differently. So that makes it a little bit harder to check um, answers. One good trick you can use for checking your answer if you're trying to compare it to another answer, let's say in a textbook, is to put your answer and answer, let's say in a textbook, in the graphing calculator or in the graphing app and graph both functions. And even though they look different, their graphs should be exactly the same. Okay, so these are the steps for solving a separable differential equation.